Hi everybody, I'm here in the Outback. I came here on a tour, said out loud I was expecting everyone who lives here to be wearing fedoras and camo gear, got called some words I didn't even know were legal to say anymore, and now I'm alone and stranded waiting for something cool to happen. When I first came to the land that's shaped like a cat head on one side and a dog head on another, I thought, ah, oh, hamburgers, what can I talk about while I'm here? What sort of intricate world can I dive into today? Cereal. The year is 1984. Two kiddos get 1984 and can't find a scrumptious meal for breakfast. Luckily, three nice men suddenly appear and begin to bake the cinnamon toast crunch to everyone's delight. This trio is Wendell, Quello, and Bob. Wendell toasts the squares in a pan, Quello adds cinnamon and sugar, and Bob makes everything crunchy. But because Quello and Bob were kind of incompetent, a little bit clumsy, and overall not too great at making stuff, one day in 1991, Wendell drowned the two of them in a river, where they remain missing to this day with failure to find where they went if they're even alive. From this point on, Wendell was the sole force responsible for the production of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. He went from just doing the toast to now doing everything, so good for him, I guess. For the next 18 years, his delicacy would go from a few kids to the entire galaxy with everyone knowing how good these squares are. Even aliens getting access to them and a kid's nose coming to life and running seemingly miles from the mere scent of cinnamon. The cereal was wacky and potentially dangerous, but ultimately beloved for being a wonderful part of a complete breakfast. Yet, on another hand, the advertising was quieter. As before, there were pleasant bakers singing and, at this point, anything like this clashed with the happy man on the box whose head was shaped more like a nose than his actual nose. But one day in 2009, an iconic bacteria clawed its way into our hearts. The cinnamon squares, crazy squares, also more recently known as the Cinemojis, which I'm never gonna say again because that name is stupid as hell and it hurts me to say. Almost immediately, Wendell evaporated as the mascot character, though he's confirmed to still be working in the background, and if he potentially unalive the other two bakers, imagine what he would do to sentient cereal. For the past four 14 years, the squares have remained the face of Cinnamon Toast Crunch with a simple enough premise. They're cannibals and they eat each other. The average commercial in this Blue Bowl era is simple enough. All of the squares are seen living together around a cereal bowl, only using whatever they have near them, like spoons and especially each other, for example. They will either just be standing around or doing some sort of humanish activity, like professional levels of synchronized swimming. And truth be told, that's honestly really impressive that they took the time to learn this routine, only for one of them to snap and kill them all, and you had a good thing going. Cannibalism is a slightly more valid survival strategy in this case, especially if they taste good. And they probably do, since that's the point, you doof. They taste like Toast Crunch, and it's so good that if you were made out of it, you would eat yourself. And it's even worse when it's confirmed that they're alive and they're crumbs. That's what the squares will do to themselves and each other. But with how eerie this world is, you can kind of observe these commercials like watching a documentary on an animal you've never heard of. Crazy squares also have organic eyes, tongues, and especially teeth, which made me wonder if cannibals commonly eat teeth. And this Google search alone brought me one step closer to being on a watch list. To give another idea of how bad their entire your situation is. Imagine if you were with two friends. One of them has dandruff and they make it snowstorm from their crusty scalp. Now, imagine the other friend made contact with the dandruff to their tongue and their natural response was to eat you and your friend with dandruff without hesitation. That is what they're doing. And even though there's a couple dozen of these commercials, I was really unable to find anything really worthwhile until I found out about a promotional endless runner game called Crazy Square's Milk River Run. It's here that we learn that they live less like in a large house and more in like a liminal space. The milk weirdly has similar properties to sand for some reason, and I want to say there's tides, but truthfully I have no clue. A few of the Crazy Squares act like sharks, a primal instinct that has been demonstrated a couple times in the commercials. The playable squares need to surf through this milk on a spoon, whereas another one is hellbent on chasing the player. But of course, there's things in the background like an infinite kitchen, infinite table, infinite cereal, and infinite whatever these things are, I forgot what they're called. So I went from kind of understanding this nightmarish kitchen dimension to getting much more confused. And then I found out about more recent events the Crazy Squares have been up to, which gave my big blob of confusion like six moderately sized confusion tumors. Alright fellas, what the frick frack snake snack is this? The Cinnamon Toast Crunch City Cinnabill, whatever the hell you want to call it, is a more recent invention making its debut around 2017. These commercials are about the same as before, the only major difference, of course, being the SETI. It's, 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 it's just Detroit. It's just Detroit. Nobody is safe. The life expectancy here is 23 minutes. 
There's a cinnamon toast crunch tinder and a granola people and churro cinnamon people and cinnamon roll people. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. There's gonna be squares using their tongue lassos to drive by. Crazy squares do not live long. In a soccer game, at a concert, skiing, nowhere is safe. On a family road trip or in an apartment with your friends, this is truly where the strongest will survive. Yet with all of this, I have to wonder how they're able to construct these major buildings despite a rapid population decrease. Oh, never mind. They, they just have a factory and they replace everyone easily. But with the factory, now we need to ask why the squares are built to want to eat each other. This civilization could be modernized and perfected just by altering the new ones to not want to eat their peers. They can keep drinking milk because milk is the only liquid that exists here. I'm more intrigued than I am concerned where they gained all this access to milk to replace all the water. But let's not worry about that. Still though, what the dickens can be realistically done to end the cycle? What's even causing this cycle? Well, I have a couple ideas. Idea 1. Very angry baker scientist making his own evil sea monkey society. For the past 38 years, we've known of the three bakers, and considering the fact that Wendell very possibly eliminated the other two from the picture, I feel like he's partially responsible for this constructed nightmare. It's already been kind of shown he lacks any flakes of any morals, appearing in houses, using household ovens without asking the owners, honestly I'm grasping for straws of video proof. I think part of him disappearing in adverts was Wendell constructing an ideal species. By this I mean 18 years and millions of dollars of cereal revenue went to crafting the crazy squares as a species, at first observing them in his house or maybe mansion which features a giant milk river that he drowned his fellow bakers into because they didn't like the morally corrupt situation very much. This is more of me throwing out theories of course, it could easily be Wendell observing the squares as a terrarium, that could be how they have so much milk and actual resources. So then why are the squares intentionally being made to eat each other? Well, in this situation, in my humble opinion at least, the cinnamon squares simply have a severe cocaine problem in their cities. They have enough physical traits and intelligence required to do relatively complex things like play sports, video games, and even drive. It's only through them using their non-existent noses to smell the planted cinnamon dust that they lose composure and act in this violent manner like they went ahead with some intrusive thoughts. But hold on, there's another idea. Idea 2. Wormholes. Some commercials introduce a cinnamon wormhole that will randomly appear for a few seconds and then warp somewhere else. There is no valid reason for how or why they appear or exist, but for once, I really don't want to think or talk about how common they are or why they can appear. I don't really, you know, cinnamon wormholes. It happens, you know, we have thunderstorms, they have wormholes. We, we all got our own problems. Potentially, I could see the squares acting like the foods in that kind of not very good and definitely not family-friendly animated movie Sausage Party, where the food humans see are just food, but the food are alive in their own world. With this, the crazy squares that are produced either came to or from our own world into this mildly effective marketing campaign. It's how they're able to combine and improve the mediocre cereal of an innocent leprechaun who's awfully passionate about cereal. It's how they were able to come into the blue bowl liminal space. It's why we can eat them without perceiving them having teeth or tongues and- Oh, ew, could you, ugh, could you- could you imagine how gross that would be? Like, having teeth in your cereal? Oh, that's horrible to think about. I'm sorry, that was a- Regardless of whatever you think in my weird little theories about Cinnamon Toast Crunch, I think there's at least a few midpoints that are indisputable. The surplus of milk is odd, the fluctuating population is a bit strange, but then there's wormholes in Wendell and I don't really think we should delve any deeper into these cases. When thinking about this, it's very much like putting a toddler in a wood chipper, because it's messy, relatively unsatisfying, and especially unnecessary. The cycle they find themselves into lacks much of an exit. They live in peace until they realize that they're supposed to eat each other. It's like that game where you lose when you remember the game by the way you lost the game, but instead of being mildly embarrassed by losing, you kill or be killed. And though this video isn't sponsored by Kellogg's or Cinnamon Toast Crunch or anyone, it's a delicious, nutritious, and expeditious meal fun for your entire family tree that you can enjoy any time of the day, but I'll be silently judging you if that any time of the day is from 5pm to 4am. I hope you learned a little bit more about the most popular cereal friends around. Feel free to check out more goofball chupo stuff, climb that food pyramid, get your daily vitamins, make sure to turn off the lights when you leave a room, and have a nice day! And look! A kangaroo came to visit me. He, uh, uh, she is the most kangaroo-y kangaroo I've ever seen. They're really mystical creatures when you take a closer look. I can really feel the danger in the air. Like something very bad is about to happen and I'm not in a safe place anymore.